Let, let, let us see it, man. That's exciting. On, hi. Hi, hi, pretty girl. <laughs> hi, pretty girl. Say hi, mama. Ooh, What's her name? Kaden. Yep, Kaden. Is she finna start? What, what a K? Yeah, with a K. Now she's finna start grabbing the phone. No, yeah. go to sleep, honey. Right, right, right. <laughs> say, Katie, you on the radio with daddy? Say, hey, say you on the radio, mama. Say, hey, say it's Vito, baby. You a superstar. Look, say, hey, it's Vito, baby. Say, you got it. You, you got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. Let's go I love Let's the girl go. dad life. We not gonna hold you up, man. Once again, man, welcome to the Quick Silver Show. <laughs> For sure. With Dominique the Diva, of course, and you guys know it's it's Women's History Month, so my ladies, we are feeling ourselves right now, and this guy just came out with with the anthem that really got us extra feeling yeah, ourselves. Vito, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> welcome, man. Welcome. welcome to the show. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you for having me, man. You know, got the little one here with me, so you know she. She might inter interject a couple things, but it's all good. We're gonna make it happen. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. It's Women's History Month, and you are a girl dad. Is this your first? Yeah. Yeah, my first. Yeah, this is my first, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think when I have a, you know, me and my girl, we have a, uh, we have a little boy. Is old with after that, but if we have a girl next, we had to try for, we had to try for a boy. But three is my max. So I, I, was the one max. And done. I was one and done. I'm two and three. So I got a girl and the boy. My son is thirteen. My daughter's eight. Okay. And okay, Diva, cool. you does it get? Yeah. Does it get? Does it get easier? Tell me, does it get easier? Um, it gets different. Different. But not easier. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I have a one. Uh, how old is Cash? I want to say he's sixteen months. He's one years old. His name uh, is Cash with a K. I was okay. so happy to have a boy. I'm scared to have a girl. Another me? Oh my god, no! Uh, yeah. I have a I mean, niece. She listen, drives me crazy. I'm gonna tell you something. I mean, you know, at this point, I'm gonna have to become Diddy rich because between my daughter and and, yeah. and my and my girl, I'm gonna yeah. be broke right. I'm gonna be broke right here, man. <laughs> I can speak for it. Yeah, I can speak for that. Like, like I had my son first, um, mm -hmm. Antonio, but then I had my daughter. And I always say, like, when you become a dad, you know, every dad, we, we pray for a healthy baby first, of course. Exactly. That, that's that's the first. That was the first prayer, for sure. That's first. That, that's the first prayer. But then after that prayer, it's like, I want a boy and I want a girl. So somehow yeah. I got lucky, got my boy first, got my girl second. Yeah. And it's yeah. different. I can't explain it. It's just a different love. It's not that you love one more or anything, yeah. but like a girl dad, it's a different type of love. I, you like, know, I try to tell my I try to tell my, my girl that I say this is my first, right? But I just I just told her, I was telling her like I just don't see myself like telling her no, but me telling my son <laughs> no. Absolutely. Go sit down. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Go sit down somewhere. You feel me? And she's like, yeah. no, you can't do that. I'm like, look, baby, I, I just can't explain it. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, I'm going to try to be as, you know, as equal and as fair as possible. Fair. But you Good got luck. the little girl, man. You she's got the wrapped girl. around your finger already. I'm a girl. I'm a daddy's girl. And yeah, but it, it, it gets to the point, too. Well, I might tell my mom something, but if she tells my dad, I'm mad. Like, why would you tell him that? I don't want him to think right. that I'm an angel. What do you mean? Why, right. are you even, right. why are you doing that? And then like, and then if I did something bad growing up and my mom would be going off on me, but all my dad would have to say is, I'm disappointed in you. And then I would be like, mm. oh, my God. No. You know, you know. And it's the same with, with, with my dad, with, you know what I'm saying, with boys and their dads, right? Because mm -hmm. my mom, you know, she would be like, I don't why would you do that? I would kind of take it with a grain of salt and be like, all right, man, all right, cool. I, I, I did it. My, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But my dad would be like, I'm just, I'm absolutely disappointed in you. Uh, he said he, he disappointed in me. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm disappointed in my dad. Yeah, right. It's like, man, because everybody, you know, me, I wouldn't be just like my dad. It's like, damn, I disappointed him. It's like, oh, my goodness. How are your parents but, you know. now with all of your success? Because I know, like, you've had a crazy road to get yeah. where you are now. I think your story is so inspirational for people who may not know. How do your parents feel now? Well, well, my mom passed in 2013 when I was on the show. But I know she's happy. I know she's smiling down. So but my good. pops, my pops, though, he's like, I, I actually gifted him a gold plaque. Of, of my of, of you got it so i've ordered plaques for the team and i gifted him one as well just to thank him for you know what i'm saying just you know you know giving me life and being there for me and believing in me and uh, it brought him to tears so you know he's you know he's definitely uh one of my number one fans you know one of one of my big supporters um but he's like son my only thing my dad wanted me to do was be able to take care of myself and live 
And if I had a family, take care of my family. That was his yeah. only thing. He didn't care what I did. Literally, That's he didn't deep. care what I did. That's deep, man. You know if you're just tuning into the show, once again, we're talking to Vito. And when you mentioned about being on a TV show, for those who might not know, you were on The Voice. Yep, The Voice. Yep, yep. On The Voice. Um, salute to you. You're doing an amazing job on The Voice. Um, but Thank a lot you. of people might not know because, of course, right now, you're an artist. You're, you're a girl dad, yeah. but you're an artist, right? But yeah. you're a songwriter first. Like, you were yeah, a songwriter man. before all of this. Yeah, before before all of the, like, you know, the fame and, and, and the recognition, right? I started off being an artist just like, you know, doing covers and, you, you know, YouTube and stuff like that and mixtapes. Um, but, you know, nothing started to shake quick. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, indep being independent, you got to have your own money. Facts. And, um, you know, I was a songwriter. I was writing on my own songs. And, you know, my manager basically kind of put it in my ear and was like, yo, what you think about writing songs for, you know what I'm saying, for other people? And I'm like, ah, man, nah, I don't want to do that. I literally was like, nah, I don't want to give my songs away because I feel like these songs are creation. They're a part, they're a part of me. Right. And um, he was like, listen, man, well, right now we broke. <laughs> <laughs> so what you gonna do? You got new song. He, like, he like, right now, ain't nobody booking you for no shows. YouTube ain't jumping. We broke. But I know we can get some placements and get some publishing checks in. And so I'm like, all right, man, I, I'll try. And uh, I know forget my first major placement. It wasn't in the States. My first major placement was in Korea. Really? On a K-pop, on a K-pop artist. Oh, wow. On a K-pop artist. And um, you know, K-pop, you know, Korea, they, you know, they give you a bread. Like if you say, look, I want 10, 10 bands for the song, you know, they're gonna give you your 10 bands. You know, in the States, if they want you say you want 10, they're gonna go, they're gonna say, I got two. You they, know what I'm saying? Then they then they're gonna you give you some points. I, I, I'm gonna give you publishing points and yeah, credit. Nah, nah, exactly. Give me my nah, money. Nah. Right, exactly. So I never forget, man, that first placement over in Korea, when that check came, I was like, I, I broke. It wasn't number like, I think it was like five or five grand or something like that. It's a lot of money. Um, but, I was, but I was like, I was like, oh, snap, we can do this? Next thing you know, I kept writing. I kept writing. And the placements kept landing overseas, kept landing. Next thing you know, we sold a million copies, three million copies. You know what I'm saying? And then we transitioned over to Chris Brown and then later Usher. LMA, then August Alcina. Justin so, Bieber. Justin Bieber. So, you know, it's like, it's crazy, man, because I I tell people all the time, I did not want to be a songwriter. I did not <laughs> want to be a songwriter. Right. And but I hear that a lot. I'm going to cut you off. I hear that a lot from a lot of, like, songwriters. Like, I know songwriters like Neo and mm -hmm. Dream and Sean mm -hmm. Garrett. Or and even Ro Timmy. Right. Ro Timmy's Ro like, yeah. I was broke, so I did power for some money, and now look, power right. is power. It's lit, right. <laughs> you know, you did... I didn't even want to do the voice. Like I told him, I said, I don't want to do the voice because I don't want to get on there and lose on TV. It's like, I and I honestly, I kind of felt like, man, I'm past the competition stuff, man. I, I'm in, I feel like I'm going to be in the big leagues real soon. Yeah. But my manager talked me into, he talked, he talked me into that again. He said, use this as a stepping stone to get into the big leagues. Yeah. And I used it as a stepping stone, man. And Next thing you, you know, stepped Usher, up the mentor. billboard now. You done stepped up yeah. the radio. We playing you every day. Like, exactly. how was that? <laughs> you got it. How was it feeling? Uh, well, how was it hearing your song on the radio? Man, listen. I mean, I were, I haven't heard it here on, in Atlanta yet, but I know they planned it. But I heard it in like, uh, I think it was in, um, what was that? What was that? It was in Miami. Yep. I was in Miami and uh, I was in, in, in a lift. I was in a lift, man. And I heard the song come on and it's just like, the last time I heard my song on the radio was almost, and this was like, because you, of course you pay to play everywhere, but this was probably like almost 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? When I heard my song on the radio, cause I was with a, I was with a label who had a little paper and they put, you know, shots out to them too, because if it wasn't for them, I would never got a song on the radio. But when I heard you got it and I just heard, I, I, I peeped and I, I saw the Uber driver singing the song. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I mean, I, I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't do nothing but smile, man. You know, I couldn't do nothing but smile and just say thank you. And as thank you, smiling, God. As you're smiling, your daughter's in the background singing what you're saying. Daddy, we got it. We got right. it. Right. I'm yeah. telling you, man. Like, if she so adds a, what's up, baby? If she adds a whole different type of motivation to Absolutely. everything that I do. You know what I mean? Now, you dropped the first one, <laughs> what you got it. Then you came out with the remix, what I got, Ty Dolla Sign. That's yeah, cheap. Ty. He's a cheat code. I say he's an industry yeah. cheat code. Like, you no, know, Ty Dolla on it. He's an industry cheat code. And I think what was crazy, though, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was he was going to be on the song. It was a surprise to me. 
<laughs> yeah, so my manager hit me was like, yo, he hit me on some stuff like, hey, yo, um, yo, he was like, stop, you can't have that. <laughs> she good. She um, he's he hit me like, yo, uh, check your email. Ooh, I check my email. I'm like, it said, uh, you got it remix rough, and I'm like, you remix. I'm like, okay, I didn't, I knew he was doing some remixes, but I didn't know who. I listened, I'm listening to it, and that they said. Dallas side, I was like, what? <laughs> Yo, I was like, oh. And he came in, he came in and killed it, man. He added, you know, he added, he added like the, like the, uh, what word am I looking for? Like the, it was almost like the comedic, the comedic side of it. Mm-hmm. Also like the, also like the street side of it. Like yeah. when he said, he, he said, he said, your ex need a stylist anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like right, it was right. kind of like it was like, oh man, it's you know cool. But I when I heard <laughs> it, I knew people were gonna love it. And then his 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 runs and ad libs, I was like, I've been yep. a fan. So when he did that, I was like, yeah, this is the one. Yeah, and then cool and then show. Young Dolphin and then Young Dolphin Money Man came mm-hmm. and did it. It was a wrap. I was I was like, first of all, I was kind of scared because it's like we talk about Young Dolphin, we talk about Money Man, and right. my whole thing was them. My whole thing was them. I didn't want them to take from the essence of the record. Right. Because you take a song like you got it, it's not necessarily a street record, but people can appreciate, it, right? Right. And Young Dolphin Money Man came in and it did his thing, and I was like, "Hey, yo, this just this really just showed a whole different side of them as well mm-hmm. to my fans and their fans because it's like, oh, oh, y'all can rap about stuff other than drugs and and, and, and cars right. and having a right. whole bunch of money and jewelry. Y'all can rap about other stuff. Okay, cool. Right. So that kind of opened up another door for them as well, and. That record's going crazy. They playing You Got It and the remix online. All, all three of them. The no, streams is going up. You definitely got the juice, the sauce, Yeah, all we of that. like, man, we like 100,000 away from going platinum. Now, speaking yes. of existence, it's going to happen this weekend. Yeah. It's All-Star Weekend. I forgot I feel it's going to happen this weekend. So right, a- All-Star yeah. Weekend. Streams <laughs> yeah, going All-Star up. Weekend. It's, yeah. it's Women's History Month, so you know we about to be playing oh, yeah. and we're celebrating women all month by the end of the month. There you go. And you, you, got to, and you got to know, man, like, you know, my, my whole thing is has always been about um, bringing back the storytelling aspect of of um, of R and B and bringing putting the love back into R and B because Please. you know I, I felt like the love had left R and B. I felt like it was just people get a slow beat and and sing sing some lyrics over it in, in this R and B. Nah, I mean it's just it's a song. Yeah. It's a song that falls in that genre, but R and B consists of a, a different layers of of what a song should be. And I feel like you know that's what you got it is bringing back, and this new album is doing as well. So we're, once again, we just heard that we're talking to Vito. Uh, what's next, man? You got it. We know the remixes. Uh, when, when can we expect something else? Some new projects? Oh, anything else? So the the project is done, man. Um, I just got back a few features that w- that we had to get on there. Can't really say who it is, but we got some oh, some dope features on there. Uh, so the album is done. Uh, I mix and master my own stuff. So right now I'm just mixing and mastering it. And after that, I get with the team and we come up with a date. So um, we should be, y'all should be hearing, hearing some in the next couple of weeks about when Yay! it's going to drop. And then we're going to, you know, we start shooting videos and singles and stuff like that. Um, got some some more big placements coming out. Got some more, uh, some, I, I can say this. I got a bunch of records coming out on Chris. Um, but I, you know, I'm working with Justin Bieber right now. Um, we're just working on some 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 really big stuff, man. I you know I'm trying to get into some acting. Got the team. I was gonna ask acting. about that. <laughs> yeah, acting. Yeah, acting is definitely on my list. Um, got some some we got some endorsements that's you know that's looking good and everything. So you just I always tell people, man, all it takes is one. It took one Max. song, man, and yeah. you know every every all the doors start to open up. It's like yeah. that one song. That one song is a universal key to every door you ever wanted to get in. So it- so here's a question, Vito. What's that one song that you wrote that you got like that first big check for? Outside of the one in, in, in Korea, like what's that one for Chris or whoever? Like this was the Freaky like, Friday. Moment. It was it was Lil Dicky and Chris Brown, Freaky Friday. Freaky for Friday. real? We yeah. played that song so much yeah. on the radio. And I was just like, yeah. what? Oh my God, why are we playing it so much? People yeah. love that song. It's such a fun yeah. record. That was one of hey mama. That was one of that was my I, that was my first ever six figure check, like six figures, and it was like as a as a up and coming still an up and coming songwriter. That's like that's huge. Now, I know, and the great I know, thing about that, I know you're responsible ahead. now. Your your girl dad, and you're responsible now. You're making great decisions, but we all For have sure. that moment when we make oh, our yeah. first big check and we do oh, something yeah. irresponsible. 
Like, what was that first big buy you bought? Like, I got money now. Let me go. Um, ahead and like, like, and forget it. I'm doing this for me. Yeah, I wouldn't I'm, bought. I'm I would. No, nah, right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't cop. I wouldn't cop the Cartier. <laughs> bust hey, down. I wouldn't cop the. I wouldn't cop the Vito chain Cuban link. Cop my girl a bust down Roly. Mm-hmm. Um, Period. bought a bought her a Range Rover. Rover. Yeah, bought her a Range Rover. I bought myself bought myself a Shelby GT 500 20 like 2020. Well, yeah, 2020 because it was 2018 when it came out. Mm-hmm. But it was considered a 20. But I was like, I just went crazy, man. I was like, but then this right. the thing. The thing is, like, I, I even I didn't because I didn't blow through all of it. You know what I'm saying? I kept some of it. But the thing is, with that, with that, like, just like the the um, what word am I looking for? The snowball effect. Right, right. Everything just started. Everything just started to increase. So even though that big check came in, and I was, you know, went up to Icebox, spent, you know, spent spent a hundred. Everything started to multiply, yeah. and then, you know, a couple of years later, you got it popped off. Mm. <laughs> and that's the that's mm-hmm. the that was the that was the meal ticket. You right. got us the meal ticket, and I and I think with that, you know, I mean, what can you say? It's all like I mean, God's it's, timing is everything. It's exactly. all about God. It's all about God's timing, oh, man. And I think I think that he's um I think that he's been been proud of how I've been handling the money that he's because he knew I was gonna do that. When he gave me that big check, he knew I was gonna do that. He said, Hey, here goes he goes go have some fun. Gotta get the bus down. Yeah, <laughs> when I when I send this other one. Do the right thing, and I think that's what you know. He's he's happy with how I'm handling it. Oh well, thank you so much. We are so like, you know, excited for your entire project and see what else you have in store, especially for the ladies. We love, like sure. you said, R and B singing to the ladies. Just like hello, you know, we right. want y'all to ask us nicely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like right, you got to ask right. like. <laughs> Like, we want to do nicely, those things, man. but ask nicely. Talk yeah, to me nice, and we really like that. And it gets oversaturated <laughs> sometimes with the other stuff. So we are definitely looking exactly. forward to playing Keeping Vito in heavy oh, rotation. Man. Ain't that right, Poo-Poo? She's like, right, look, man, y'all, man. it's time to go, y'all. <laughs> She's like, She's like, okay, we can leave it. Y'all have talked to my dad long enough. Um, it's nap time. <laughs> it's nap time. She's nap time. You see how she popped yeah, in that thing, though? Right. She's letting us know. It's time to wrap it up. <laughs> we love you, up, man. Thank you so much, uh, for, for checking in with us, man. We wish you and your family uh, nothing but love and success, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep writing songs for yourself and others. Um, Thank you. Last thing, how can we follow you on social? Put your social out there for everybody to follow you. Yo, everything is Vito the Singer. That's V-E-D-O-T-H-E-S-I-N-G-E-R. G-E-R. That's um Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, TikTok, YouTube, everything. Everything is across the board. Follow the movement. Got some really big things happening, man. I really appreciate y'all having me. Thank you. Um, thank y'all and so much for the support. Look, when all this is over, you got to come to D.C. and turn up. got to come. Gotta, I love D.C. too. I love D.C. <laughs> we love, love to have you. you. Thank right, you so much. Bro. I appreciate it. Stay safe and send our love to the family, brother. For sure, man. Blessed. Absolutely. Take care.